Hey guys, welcome to this video. So in this video, I'm going to talk about a 10 point checklist that is very, very essential for you as an entrepreneur to fulfill before you even think of going to an angel investor and raising funds for your startup. Now this 10 point checklist that I'm about to tell you is very important. And each point in fact is very important in this 10 point checklist. Even if one of the points is not fulfilled by you or your startup, then your chances of raising funds will drastically reduce. While on the other hand, if if uh, all the 10 points are fulfilled, the chances of you uh, raising funds for your startup would be very high. And I'm telling you this based on my experience of raising funds for my startup and then also as my experience as an investor of investing in other startups. So let's straight away now dive into the 10 point checklist. So point number one is that your the problem that your idea is solving should be a problem at scale. Now, what do I mean by a problem at scale? I mean that the problem that your idea is solving should be faced by a very large number of people. It should not be a very niche problem, which a very small number of people or, or, or a very small community of people are facing. Because then what happens, no matter how good your product is, how good your product market fit is, uh, unless the market is large, unless the demand for that product is large, you won't be able to scale fast beyond a point and investors do not want to invest in businesses which uh, do not cater to a large market i mean uh, you could be a successful uh, small business you could earn a good amount of profit but that's not an investable business for an investor point number two and again a very basic point which a lot of entrepreneurs misses uh, that your unit economics should be good and should make sense what do i mean by unit economics by unit economics i mean that if you're selling a product and if it's costing you 10 rupees then you should have a market margin of at least 70 to 80 percent now it depends on various products and services but my idea is that your margin should be a healthy margin on each product or on each set of service that you sell so your unit economics should be good unless it's a very 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 large market like the case when flipkart started so usually when the markets are very large then even if the unit economics initially is not good investors might still fund you because later on as you grow uh, as you scale uh, and uh, scale into a very large company you could have other revenue models you could cross sell other revenue models so that could happen right but in most cases your unit economics should be very very strong now point number three and this is a point which i have seen that 90 percent of entrepreneurs that come to me for raising funding uh, do not satisfy which is that you have to have good traction before you even go to an investor and a good traction is necessary because without traction investor won't be able to judge whether your product has even achieved a product market fit or not now you might ask ask the question of what a good traction is honestly it depends a lot on your type of service or your type of product and I will make a separate video on it but in general in general you should at least have a revenue of three to five lakhs a month or if users number of users is your metric then you should at least have five thousand to ten thousand users unless you have this initial traction do not go to an angel investor because the chances of them funding you would be very low now point number four and it is very relevant because of today's scenario because of today's conditions of what is happening is that your product or your service should have should show initial signs of organic growth very very important see today these are the days of performance marketing where you you pour money you keep pouring money into digital marketing into performance marketing and even if your product is bad people are going to buy it because you're pouring so much money into creating catchy advertisements but if you want to build a scalable company a long-term company an investable company then your company should show organic growth what do i mean by organic growth that if every uh, channel of marketing and advertisement is stopped for your company even then your user should grow at an at a healthy rate i'm not telling you to stop performance marketing do that but have organic growth as well or at least have initial signs of a good organic growth that is very important to attract investors point number five is your core team should be in place and this is a an absolutely non-negotiable point that if you are a tech startup your tech team should be in place your core tech team should be in place if you are say a d2c startup then your operations supply chain and logistics team should be in place this is all very important because if your team is not there then investor is not going to put money in your startup so first get your team in place that's very important so point number six is market research and not just market research but correct market research now recently i was watching a shark tank episode where namita I think asked uh, a question about the market size to an entrepreneur and they uh, I think uh, told the wrong market size and the sharks were a little pissed so it's very important for you to understand to correctly study the market not just to tell the investor 
but then also for you to correctly price your product so even if you have a great product a very good product but you overprice it you are not going to succeed right and if you have a good product and you underprice it then you are not sort of uh, getting your full revenue potential so you should understand the market your competition very clearly and so that you price your product right and also because you want to enter into the market in the right way so for example i designed a product i designed a tech uh, product which is a mobile app platform and i want to enter into the market and i think the best way to enter is uh, via digital marketing ads but possibly my audience is not there on digital media platforms right possibly my audience is sitting in colleges and i want uh, for, for me college uh, publicity college advertisements might be uh, more effective so you have to study the market correctly so that you have a good go to market strategy and then good pricing for your product so this was point number 6 point number 7 is and again a lot of people entrepreneurs are confused you should have a private limited company no sole proprietorship no partnership no llp if you want to raise funding from investors from vcs as you go ahead even from angel investors a private limited company is a must full stop don't study more about it don't study what's the difference between private limited and llp and llp if you want to raise funds private limited is a must this was the seventh point now point number 8 is that you should keep a financial model of your uh, business ready in an excel format so that whenever investor asks you about questions and you would have seen on shark tank that investors usually ask that where do you see yourself in the next 2 years in the next 3 years in the next 5 years so you should keep your financial model ready in an excel format for the next 1 3 5 years right you could keep these three models ready for the next 1 year for the next 3 years and for the next 5 years and a very simple model you don't need to sort of complicate it by including tax is and everything very simple model of uh, costs your income and then your ebitda right which would be your income minus your cost so have that model ready because whenever you engage with an investor those will be the first questions that would come to you which brings me to the ninth point uh, which is again an important thing to keep ready which is your pitch deck have that also ready because the first point of contact that you do with an investor would be your pitch deck you would probably get an email of an investor and he would ask you to send uh, him the pitch deck uh, and the financial model probably so you should keep it ready a good pitch deck i have separate video of how to make a pitch deck if not i'll make it but keep your financial model and pitch deck ready don't wait for an investor to ask for it keep it ready and as soon as the investor asks for it send it in the next few minutes so that the investor is also impressed that these guys these founders are ready they are not preparing uh, everything from scratch and this brings me to the last point which is even if you do all these nine points and now say the investor is interested the last thing that the investor is going to do before he invests in your startup is due diligence of your startup which means that he is going to whatever claims that you have made to that investor that you have earned this much revenue these much these many are your users this much income you have generated over the last 6 uh, months he is going to verify all that that is called due diligence so you should keep all your bank statements ready you should keep your tax stack ready in, in, if he wants to verify that these are the number of users that you have how are you going to get get it verified so you should keep your tax stack ready your analytics software ready to sort of give him snapshots of these are your number of users these are your daily active users these are your monthly active users so all this data should be kept in certain format so that that investor when it comes to due diligence you could swiftly send it to him and uh, he could verify that in fact all your bank statements also of your past uh, business past income that you have done over the last 6 months all that should be kept ready so i think i have covered all the points that i could think of uh, which even when i invest in a startup when i look for uh, startups to invest in these are the 10 points which i absolutely look for and even if one of the 10 points uh, is not satisfied it sorts of uh, take my mind away from investing into that startup so all the best to you guys i hope you have learned uh, good things from this video and if you are looking to raise funding for your startup all the best for it if you follow these 10 points i am sure very sure that you would be able to raise uh, funding for your company i'll see you guys in the next video thank you